right, welcome back to Franchise Hockey Manager. In this episode, we have a case of a vanishing youth tournament. We see some big boy contracts and we have our first game, the opening night against the Brandon Wheat Kings. All right, welcome club two, part two. We are here with the Regina Pats. We've got a whole heap of news that we're gonna quickly cover. We have a youth tournament game against the Ira Wild, and we also have an opening season game against the Brandon Weekings. So let's crack on with the news. Uh, we did have this. Now, it's a nonsense piece of news, but I just loved it about how a funk trade may happen. But yeah, it's a gentleman called Koi Funk. 17 year old, he's actually pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, gotta love a bit of a funk trade. After that, we've had a couple of our players get their little big boy contracts. So uh, Graham Jones was our very first one. He picked up a contract with Colorado. They sent him back down to us about four or five days afterwards. It really wasn't that long. Yeah, there it is, July. So yeah, he was with the four days that he's been brought back down to us. But yeah, for Graham Jones, he, with his contract, it was a fairly chunky one. He used to be on 3,000 pounds a year. His big boy contract is 925,000. So nice drinks are on you, Mr. Jones. Moving on, Cole Temple also got a big boy contract. He was previously on 3,000. He is now on, I believe it's 925 again. Yep, uh, him with the emo eyes. He managed to last about a month, I think roughly, but he's now been given back to us to run for the season. In the frantic panic that I experienced when I looked at my roster and realized, hmm, okay, we've just gone and lost two players. I did go and sign Connor Labar. He's not amazing. He's got the potential to get okay. But yeah, currently he's a half-star player. Yeah, he's just padding out our stats. Corbin Albon went off to the Florida Panthers. He also got his big boy contract, but not quite as big as the other boys. He got 835 a year for free. He's not been given back yet. I'm a little bit grumpy. Please give me that back, Corbin. I don't know if he's good, but I want to use him. We did get a couple of rather weird trades, and I don't quite know what the uh, Blazers or the Wild were doing when they tried to, uh, to offer us these. Both of them were after Carter Haney. I'd forgotten to take him off the trading block. Um, so yeah, we had a couple of offers come in for him. Um, they were offering this half-star, one-star, 16-year-old in, re you know, in return for a two and a half star, five star, 17 year old. So I kind of laughed in their face a little bit and said, hmm, no. Um, and then with the wild, it was a half star, half star, 18 year old. Uh, in our preseason, we have gone and lost Matteo Michaels. He was the three star, 20 year old. So it was gonna be his final season with us. He's out for five months with a ruptured Achilles tendon. We've had our training camp where we've had a few of our players start to picking up some decent amounts of stats, which was always nice to see. In fact, there's a couple of our good players, Graham Jones has just saw on there. Labar's improving, that's nice. He may get better, probably won't. We got our season tickets where we sold 3,240, so just over 50%, which is nice. But when you look compared to everybody else, such as maybe the Hitmen or the Oil Kings, yeah, we're not hitting anywhere near that. I'm thinking we are Midland. I mean, there's a few things like Portland, Spokane, uh, the Royals are literally just below us. Um, so yeah, I would say, actually looking at it, fifth, sixth highest in that league, that's not too bad. I've got a couple of players that have improved. I mean, Labar, um, I'm hoping he's gonna get better. He's currently out with a black eye. Um, and then we've got a couple more kind of filling out the roster sign-ins. First one was Emerson Callender. He is 17, he's got a couple of years. He could improve to a three-star player. We've also picked up Brett Woodard. He is 17, he's currently half-star, but may get two and a half. So they may improve, they may not. We'll just have to see. But yeah, first we have got this game here. It's come up with the youth tournament against the Iowa Wild, an AHL team in Des Moines. The weird thing is when I press this button, I don't get to see it. So yeah, and there you go, it just, puts it straight back, here's the next game. How do we do? What's the score? Can we have a look? No, no we can't, no. You look at the roster, that game, it, it, it never happened. Um, I tried to have a look, okay, brilliant, it's a youth tournament. Uh, which one? <laughs> which one? It's not there, that's the Stanley Cup playoffs. Go back to the youth tournaments again, get a schedule, that's not there either, got a previous day, no, not there. 
So uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how we got on on that game. I'm hoping we did well. I'm hoping we won. But um, yeah, it decided not to tell us. Uh, oh, we've had the preview come in. So let's have a read of this. With the Western Hockey League season about to get underway, the early Ed Chenoweth Cup favourites appear to be Spokane. Hmm, okay. General Manager Scott Carter has built a squad that will be the team to beat this year, but you can expect challenges from Dan Price's Victoria Royals and Calgary, featuring Oliver Tulk. Amongst the Dark Horses, Prince Albert stands out as a possible challenger with a big season by Harrison Lodek, capable of pushing them into contender status. The scoring race will likely see Seattle's Oliver Nerniex challenged by Cooper Gizowich of Lethbridge and Regina's Cole Temple. It's not Regina's anymore, is he? That's emo boy. The top defenseman in the league is generally considered to be the Medicine Hat Tigers blue liner Reed Anderson, with Portland's Carter Sovereign and Justin Kipke of Victoria also in the running. Finally, on goaltenders Everett's Herman Liv stands out as the league's best, while Seattle Thunderbirds netminder Scott Raslav and Carlson Yarnasov? Yarnasov? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Of Brandon can also steal games for their league. Now, Reed Anderson is actually a name I remember in my FHM 9 series, I believe it was. He was a player. We actually moved to Medicine Hat. We had a couple of episodes in that season. Uh, I recognise him. I wonder how he's been getting on. <laughs> he's been doing all right, actually, the last couple of years. That's nice to see. But yeah, what we're going to do, we are going to skip forward. We'll get to the opening night. We're going to get to the third period. Let's see how we get on in our first game. All right, it's opening night. It's the third period. It's also 1-1. One, one. Uh, quick thing before we start. In fact, we can just start it while we do this. Uh, where we have moved to a different league, I don't unfortunately have the jerseys for us. So uh, we are going to be playing as the coloured squares against the other coloured squares. Uh, so yeah, we're on the left-hand side. I've also got it now so we can switch the sides. Uh, and the Wheat Kings are really just trying to wind us up at the moment. Oof, that was lucky. Uh, but yeah, we're on the left-hand side. We're shooting to the right. They've got a three-on-one. That, that just had to go in, didn't it? There was no way that that wouldn't go in. Um, which is annoying because we're absolutely out shooting them. All right, stop, stop, stop celebrating. Let's just get on with the game. Thank you. Let's be professionals here. All right, Brown's on his own at the moment. He's got two in front. Passing Haney. Can we do anything with it? We cannot, but we have a face-off. Nielsen has it to Temple. We can just get that in nice and quickly. We can't. We're looking at a two-on-one at the moment. If our players would like to... We'd like to give them a goal. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yes, okay, they're young. I get it. They make mistakes. It's not good enough. So it's now 3-1. Nilsson manages to grab it, which is nice. Can we do anything with this? We cannot. We do manage to get it back. We can just get another one quickly. We can't. We've got five minutes to go. Chance is in on his own. And we say that, but he took so long to get there that he's... That's okay. All right, we've got just under four minutes left and we are now only down by one. And Graham Jones, having come back, has managed to get a goal for us, which is lovely. Gillespie, is he one of our... Oh, he is one of ours. He's not having a good game. Uh, so Calvert is letting a lot of opponents get around him. Yeah, just do better. Can we do anything? We've got another penalty. We're going to do nothing in this remaining one minute, I don't think. Probably have to. We'll probably pull our goalie in a minute. If Haney wants to move forward, that's lovely. I have no idea why he wanted to do that, but that's fine. We have a. That was a quick jump. Very confused by that. And that was it. That is the end. Game number one. We massively outshot them, but in the end, we could not break through their defence. And we go down 0 1 in the standings. I'll have a quick look and see how we get on overall. And then we'll start wrapping things up. All right, just before we check the stand-ins, it does look like the Red Deer Rebels are going to host the 2026 Memorial Cup. Cool, I guess. Uh, brilliant. Let's go and have a quick look at the stand-ins, see where we are at the end of game number one. Moose Jaw Warriors are uh, the team that perennially keep beating us. They're doing good either, so that's all right. Uh, looks like the Blazers haven't played yet. Bokan and Tri-City haven't played either. We look overall on the team we are just sitting above the playoff area so we're gonna leave the episode there how 
ever before we end things for good today. It was just something that I thought we'll just bring up. Now, it's been two years and a couple of months since the series started. And what I've been wondering is, well, what players do you want to see? Now, a lot has probably happened in the NHL and the CHL. There's probably players and teams out there that you might just want to know what's going on and how they're getting on. So what I'd like you to do is feel free, leave a comment. Let me know which player you want me to look at or which team that you want me to look at. Now, I have recorded a whole bunch of these episodes and this episode anyway was recorded on the 3rd of January just to give you a rough idea yeah and you're probably not going to see this until about the 23rd of January so there's about a three week gap between when I filmed it and when you're going to see it but I'll check the comments we'll have a look and see who and what you want to see and we'll do a bit of an episode where we have a little bit of a look around see how people have been getting on see if people have retired and then we'll get back to normal games after that yeah, we'll leave it there. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you guys next time.